Hello folks and welcome to part 4 of looking at some of the most violent tornadoes that have ever happened in the United States. This is to go even further beyond the 210 mile per hour EF5s that we talked over in parts uh, and 2 and 3. Of course we are going to be looking at our honorable mentions first and before even that I'll state some disclaimers right now. This is not a comprehensive list of every violent tornado that has ever happened. In the United States, that number is 68 in total, combining F5s and EF5s. This is looking at just 20 tornadoes. In the past three parts combined, we have looked at, let's see, 12. We are looking at another four in this episode for at the end of this list, end of this video, sorry, going to be a total of 16. Another four in part five, of course. This is also only going over tornadoes that have happened just in the U.S. That's not to say that other places in the world have not had violent tornadoes. Other parts of the world do get violent tornadoes. However, information, for the most part, uh, about tornadoes that have happened in the U.S. is almost unparalleled compared to the rest of the world. The U.S. may not be a role model in a lot of ways, but in terms of weather preparedness, I would like to think that the U.S. is at least a role model in... <laughs> So again, honorable mentions. The first one we have here is the Red Rock, Oklahoma EF4 that happened in April of 1991. The upper on wheels measured wind speeds of anywhere from 270 to 280 miles per hour. This is 434 to 450 kilometers per hour. That is insanely strong. No matter what, that photo of, a red, of the Red Rock F4 seen here in the bottom left. The Chandler, Minnesota F5 damage seen from this tornado on the lower right is estimated to have had wind speeds of more than 261 miles per hour, more than 420 kilometers per hour. This 1992 twister is one that is a little odd. It happened very far north. This is in Minnesota and in June of all months. June and July, not particularly well known for especially violent tornadoes, but in the northern part of the U.S., they do happen around the, that time. A tornado that I thought that I ought to mention for sure is the Silver Texas EF3 that happened in May of 2016. This tornado was, re was measured by Doppler on wheels to have had wind speeds well in excess of 200 miles per hour, more than 322 kilometers per hour. This was, however, the exact same situation that happened with the 2013 El Reno tornado, where that it was not based on wind, the rating was based on damage. Something that was, of course, based on damage, that's how the Fujita scale works, is the Tri-State Tornado. This is a retroactively rated tornado. Well, all tornadoes are rated like this, but well after. This tornado happened 99 years ago in March of 1925. This is a multi-record tornado. It is the deadliest that, have, that has ever happened in the United States. And, so, and it should stay that way. The trend so far is tornado deaths are going down as years have been going on. So that's an amazing thing. It is the fastest moving uh, continuous tornado. I know that the uh, the Pilger uh, twins, one of them, uh, reached much more forward speed than this tornado, but this thing consistently was around 60 to 70 miles per hour forward speed, which is very, very impressive. That wasn't even highway speed at the time because highways didn't even exist. This is also the longest tornado track in the entire United States. Even if you split it up into its two most likely parts, the first part is still the longest ever recorded on, sorry, in America. This thing is estimated to have had wind speeds of 300 miles per hour or 482 kilometers per hour. Do take that with a bit of grain of salt though, however many grains you want, as again, this is 1925 we're talking about. Construction quality is not nearly as it was 50 years later when the uh, Fujita scale was in effect. This is lower construction quality. This is not as tornado-resistant structures as what we build now. So 
is this still in the F5? I, I would still say so. At minimum, this thing is high end F4. I would say violent tornadoes tend to be the longer, tend to be longer track, tend to be ones that are just absolute behemoths, really. And the way this tornado was described is truly a behemoth. This thing would cause deep ground scouring near the town of Cedricville. I believe that is in Illinois. It could be in Missouri. I apologize, apologies if uh, I'm mistaken on where that town is. This tornado would practically erase the communities of Murfreesboro and Gorham and DeSoto, Illinois and Parrish, Indiana. All of these towns, however, did manage to rebuild. Murfreesboro is still around, even though more than 90% of that town was destroyed. An interesting tornado that I really wanted to talk about, one that uh, people may not expect it, may be upset about, which I, which I get to, is the Lubbock, Texas F5 that happened in May of 1970. This was described as being a highly multi-vortex tornado with wind speeds ranging from 150 to two, more than 250 miles per hour. That is 241 to 402 kilometers per hour. I saw reports, some sources listed this thing as having 290 mile per hour winds, but um, I'll, I'll just keep 150 to 250 for, for, at least, for at least being on a little bit of a lower end there. This thing moved a 15 ton, uh, that being imperial tons, so more than roughly 32,000 kilo uh, tank. It was moved 820 meters, that is around 900 or so yards. My meters to yards isn't that great. This thing would, before it even struck the town of Lubbock, leave the sirens without power, which was... A, a bit of a unfortunate, of course. The, however, this tornado would not cause even that many injuries or deaths, which, despite going through the heart of the town, is extremely surprising. This thing would uh, just barely, this tornado barely hit the NTS building, which is called something different now. And uh, this building right here in the colored photo, we can see the, the, the brick uh, stripping from this tornado. The outer wind field distorted the frame of this building, causing cracked concrete stairwells and much more damage, especially to those, that, to those uh, materials that cannot handle rotational and torsional forces all that well. Keep in mind that uh, tornado winds are... A lot more complex than just straight line winds. Straight line winds, of course, kind of obvious. They go in a straight line, that's really it. Tornado winds, even if you're on the outer wind field, unlike hurricanes, which mostly do straight line winds, tornadoes are obviously a lot smaller and produce uh, rotational and uplifting winds. Remi reminder that tornadoes are part of the updraft, so these winds are also moving up, which is why we see especially on uh, Twitter, that uh, you'll see posts of this tornado has debris 20,000 feet up in the air. That's the debris being sucked up. That is extremely impressive, no matter what. Again, so co cracked concrete stairwells from a skyscraper. Granted, also, skyscrapers are not really meant to withstand rotational winds. You know, uh, World Trade Center 1 isn't meant to withstand a tornado, but more so just uh, small uh, back and forth due to wind. This thing damaged more than 8,000 homes. The tornado destroyed nearly 500 homes. A massive amount of homes. The Brandenburg, Kentucky F5 that happened in April of 1974 is the only tornado to be F5 in the state of Kentucky ever so far. There are some candidates, like the uh, Mayfield EF4, that is definitely a candidate to be EF5, but still officially rated EF4. This tornado roughly had wind speeds of 225 to 300 miles per hour, 362 to 482 kilometers per hour. Take that with a little bit of grain of salt. Same thing here, construction quality, not as, um, you know, m most homes are obviously not 
most of these homes in Brandenburg were not built right in 74 or, of course, after this tornado struck. Unless they were rebuilt, then they were built after. So these, so the construction quality is unknown. However, it was at least found that, that major brick homes were completely destroyed. This thing was supposedly F3 within 10 minutes, which is, in my opinion, a little bit more believable than Joplin F5 being F4 within 5, but conditions withstanding, that is still possible. Again, multiple well-built brick homes were completely leveled in Brandenburg. Some photos seen here on the upper and lower right. There were stripped car frames as seen here in the lower left. In the upper middle, a shower curtain in a tree. I don't know if you try to put metal, big metal rod into a tree. It's a little, it's a little difficult. And there was some, there were some attempts at wind rowing. Wind rowing is the tornado trying to be all nice and neat and organized and place things in a little curved line or just in a line for you so that you at least know where your home is. But also, um, it's not where I want. It's not how I want my home to be. But thanks anyways, tornado. An absolute monster Brandenburg was. Was also a monster was, of course, the El Reno, Oklahoma tornado. The last day of May 2013. This is the widest tornado ever recorded at 2.6 miles wide. If I'm not mistaken, that is 4.21 kilometers wide. Uh, the previous record holder was the uh, Hallam, Nebraska tornado which did not even keep that width for that long as this tornado did. This thing had wind speeds ranging anywhere from 155 to more than two, to around 296 miles per hour, so 249 to more than 476 kilometers per hour, all the way up to 338 miles per hour inside of the subvortices. Yes, this tornado was multi-vortex, just like Lubbock. This tornado barely skirted to the south of El Reno, where damage in El Reno was found to be EF3, even though this was officially rated EF5 to begin with. This is the damage base scale that the Fujita, Enhanced Fujita scale is. It's just how it works. Until we can get Doppler on wheels to measure every single tornado that happens in the US, we can't have a wind base scale. It's it's very difficult. EF5, again, those EF5 wind speeds, 338 miles per hour, were found in those sub-vortices, and that is where really that 200, that more than 200 mile per hour wind speeds come from. This thing's main funnel was around EF4 in intensity, guesstimated to be around 160 to 180 miles per hour strong. So what did we see from these four tornadoes? We saw that one happened in March, one in April, and two in May. Our grand total now, after 16 tornadoes, is one in March, six in April, eight in May, and one in July. These four tornadoes combined caused 816 deaths and more than 3,000 injuries. A majority of those two totals, however, do come from the Tri-State Tornado, which has 758 deaths to its name, and around $1.17 billion in damage. This is a little bit inaccurate, though, as I could not find a good way to even find a damage amount for the Tri-State Tornado, and then I did not convert 74 USD or 70 USD to 2013 USD to modern 2024 USD, so this is, this is a little bit on the, uh, on the short side of that number, it's probably around one and a half billion, possibly more than that now, with a uh, proper adjustment for inflation. With that, folks, that is all that I have for part four. Part five will be the next video coming out. I hope that you all learned something from this video. I did it while researching. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you all so much for watching.